صلى الله عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك وعلى أهل بيتك الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليك يا مولاي وابن مولاي يا أبا عبد الله فاز من اعتصم بحبلكم أمن من لجأ إلى حصنكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم سيدي فنفوز فوزا عظيما لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون on the night of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, li dhikrihi sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Usually in the Arabic culture, in the Iraqi culture specifically, the night of Abu al-Fadl is the night of the seventh, or the eve of the seventh. So the sixth, the eve of the seventh. The sixth at night, the eve of the seventh. However, in different cultures, it differs. And as uh, the request was made, inshallah, today we will do the night of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Abu al-Fadl has taken the hearts and minds of the people, of the poets. Truly a an, an unique individual. From his childhood until his passing. It is un, it is un in, What's the word I'm looking for here? When I want to express Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, truly I don't know how to express him. When I read his history, I don't know how to identify him as an individual. I don't know how to approach his personality. Whether you approach his bravery, whether you approach his sincerity, whether you approach his, uh, his protectiveness, whether you approach his faith, his religion, his humbleness, Whatever you come to him, he is the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Truly the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Amir al-Mu'mineen had many sons. But in, in, through my reading, I did not see anyone that resembled Amir al-Mu'mineen like Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salatu was salam. In fact, some scholars, they say Al-Abbas was to Imam Hussein the way Amir Al-Mu'mineen was to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Allahumma If we can have everybody please come forward a bit. We have everyone kind of, you know, pushed to one side over here. Everyone please stand up and move forward. Rahimallah man dhakar al-qa'ima min Ali Muhammad. There is a poem that I love about Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. I will recite it in Arabic and translate or try to translate it into English. It says, Abasa, Abasat wujuhu al-qawm, khawf al-mawt. The faces of the enemy frowned in fear of death. Wal-Abbasu fihim dhahikun yatabassamu. The Arabs know this poem. While Abbas is standing within them, laughing and smiling. Then it says, Batalun, Batalun, Tawarratha min Abi, Hishuja'atan. He is a warrior who inherited strength and bravery from his father. Fiha unufu bani al-dala lati turghamu, awatashtaki al-fawatim ul-atasha indahu. How could it be that the fawatim, the daughters of Fatima, complain of thirst when he's standing? Wa bi sadri sa'adatihi al-furat al-mus'amu. Al-Muf'amu, afwan, while the furat is within his grasps. Sallallahu alayka, Abu al-Fadl. Before we delve into the life of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayh, I thought we would reiterate a, a subject that came up last week. During one of the lectures, I've had some requests to focus on it. And that is, does Allah send people to heaven or to hell for no reason or are there reasons established 
that based or on those bases that Allah would send. Basically, in other words, would, does Allah send people to hell willy-nilly, as we would say? Or are there reasons for it? Ahsantum. There must be reasons. We recite in the Quran, Allah says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alif Lam Meem. That book in which there is no doubt that it is guidance, that guidance is found for those who are God-weary, God-conscientious, God-fearing. We said the other time, we said why? Why is it that this book would have guidance for those that are God-weary? Because Technically, the individual who's God-weary has already been guided, right? The Quran says no. Then the Quran describes those attributes of whom the attributes of those who are God-weary. What are they? يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. They believe in the unseen. They do their prayers. And from what we give them, they give back to the people. They pay forth. Then the Quran says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ And those who believe in what is what has been descendant upon you, Ya Rasulullah, and those who have come before you, and in the hereafter they have certainty. Then the Quran says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ it is they who, it is these individuals who have these attributes are the ones who will be guided by their Lord. Now, what is it, why is it that there is a second guidance here? And what is this guidance, how does this guidance here at the end of the fourth verse, or for the fifth verse, sorry, differ from the guidance in the second verse? The guidance in the, in the second verse says those who are God-weary. What does God-weary mean? It means that they have God in the back of their mind. That they are weary of God's existence. That they contemplate, think, keep God on their mind. That, brothers and sisters, is what we would refer to as in Arabic, fitra. What is fitra? Fitra is the intrinsic nature that God has placed within mankind. That which calls for worship. Indeed, we see that every, every civilization, up until now, with no exception, has always worshipped. Whether you're talking about the Congos, whether you're talking about Middle Eastern, whether you're talking about Indian, Asian, wherever you go, North American. Every collection of people, every group of people, worship. Wherever they go, they always worship. In fact, one of the, elder, the oldest one of the oldest trinkets ever found is called the Venus trinket or the Venus statue. It is approximately two inches long, about this big. Now this Venus statue is a statue of fertility. It is found, I believe it is about 15,000 years old. Now, as far as we're aware, we don't have any written records or any civilizations from 15,000 years prior to Christ, that is B.C., there are some buildings that date that old. But that's not our point. That's not what we're talking about. We're saying that even something that old, the first thing that they found, the oldest, the oldest thing that we found that shows the intellectual capability of man has had something to do with worship. Now, we can go further. We can try. We can keep on digging. The point, I think, is made. The point is rather clear. There is an innate want within us to worship. That is what we call fitra. Fitra, if you apply it, if you protect it, if you care for it, it becomes a proper religion. Now, sometimes that religion is what we call wad'i. Meaning what? Meaning created by man. That's where we see people worship Zeus, people worship Thor, people worship so on and so forth. And sometimes people worship heavenly religions, such as what, such as the Abrahamic faith. That's what we call them, adiyanatu samawiyah. Samawiyah means heavenly. The word heaven, by the way, just as a side note, 
does not necessarily remit, uh, refer to paradise. Rather, it refers to a point of elevation, a place of elevation that is beyond our, our recognition, that is above us, above us not necessarily in height or, uh, or above us, I mean directly above us, rather a place of grace. So when they say Dianat Samawiyah, meaning that it has been descendant upon man, descendant from the Almighty, Jalla Jalaluhu Adhuma Sha'nu. These religions come and bring you what we would refer to as monotheology, as the belief in one God and all attributes that follow that. Some other religions have different gods, and the reason they have different gods is because they try to justify the world around them through their made-up, let's say, let's, let's use that term, we don't mean any disrespect by it, through the made-up faith, through the made-up religion, nonetheless, when we, imply, when we apply the right attributes, the good attributes, what are the good attributes? They believe that there is a creator, an unknown. Okay? They pray, they worship. Now worship, what does worship do? Worship improves your individuality, improves your person should you apply it properly. And they have a very good social structure. They have a very good community. They help each other out. And those who believe in what has been sent to you and what has been sent to those who have come before you. Meaning what? Meaning believing in the Abrahamic religions. Believing in the monotheistic religions that have been descended, that have been sent down from God. Allah says, ala min Why? Why does Allah say it is they who have been guided by their Lord? Because here, when you have applied, when you have taken the two, three, four, five steps, Allah will take the two, three, four, five steps for you as well. Meaning what? Meaning Allah will bring you closer to proper guidance. Now, we continue with Surah Al-Baqarah. What does Allah say in the, con in the continuation, verse 6 and 7? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ What happens? لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Those who disbelieve. It is the same whether you warn or you do not warn them, they will not believe. Then Allah says, Brothers, stop playing around. Please stop fidgeting around. Pay attention. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Where was I? Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I strongly request and very humbly request when you are here, not for me for the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt, for the remembrance of Ahlul Bayt. When you come here, you pay respect to the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt. Not only that, when you guys are fidgeting and talking, it distracts me through the lecture. And I humbly request that we, inshallah, focus. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The Quran says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرُهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ those who disbelieve it is the same. Whether you warn them or you do not warn them, they will not believe. Then Allah says, Allah has sealed, has concealed their hearts. And their hearing. Then the Quran says, And they have veiled their eyes. They have a veil, a covering over their eyes. Now, why would Allah seal their hearts and seal their mind, their, their hearing? Essentially what Allah is saying is I will seal them. I won't, get the, I won't even give them a second chance. Why? Because through their decision, through their choice, they have what? They have attained that position. Just like with the believers. The believers, what did they do? Like the ones who are God weary, they applied that. They searched, they looked. Allah helps them. These individuals on the exact opposite end. These individuals, what happens with them? They deny. They reject. They don't want to do anything. What does Allah say? Allah says, go ahead, by all means. You are, you are left to your own whims. 
An example of that is in our daily lives. In our daily lives, how many times can you tell a person, watch out, there you're going to fall. Watch out, there's something in front of you. Imagine a person walking or, or a child running. You say, don't run, don't run. You yell at them. You raise your voice. Eventually, they trip and fall. Is that your fault? Eventually, you say, he's going to run. What am I going to do to him? That's, that's his way. Let him run. I can't do anything else to him. Essentially, that's what happens. Allah says, warns you, gives you, gives you. But you close your heart to Allah. Now, when we're closing, when we're saying that this individual closes their heart, not out of what, not out of lack of knowledge. Rather, this individual deliberately closes their heart. Imam al-Sadiq sallallahu wa sallam alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam al-Sadiq is asked, Ya ibn Rasulillah, kam wajhan lil kufr fil Islam, fil Quran. How many types of kufr exist in the Quran? The Imam says there are five types of kufr. The first two are called kufr juhud. Juhud means absolute rejection. The third is called al kufr bin ni'mah. The fourth is called kufr al bara'ah. And the fifth is called al kufr bima amar Allah bihi an yusa. Let's look at these for example. Kufr al juhud, the first type, the Imam says, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, jahadu biha, wastaykanatha. And Fusahum. They deliberately really rejected. They deliberately rejected while their hearts know that it's true. That is the first individual. The second juhud is those individuals who say there is no heaven, no hell, no God. Rather, it is the time. Rather, we are, have been created by time and we shall perish by time. Those individuals follow وَمَا إِلَّا A religion that they, pay, that they placed for themselves to justify things for themselves. Again, what? On purpose. Then we have وَنَسْتَجِيرُ بِاللَّهِ from the, from the last three. الْكُفْرُ بِالنِّعْمَةِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ الْكُفْرُ بِالنِّعْمَةِ is blasphemy, is rejecting what Allah has blessed you with. You have been blessed with good health. You have been blessed with brothers and sisters and a mother and a father. You eat. You don't go hungry. And then you say, what have I done in my life? Why does Allah treat me this way? Why is Allah not good to me? Shimsa wibdiniyai. What have I done in this world? That is kufr bin ni'mah. Allah has blessed you and you reject it. Allah gives you and you reject what Allah has given you. Kufr al bara'a is where Allah and his prophet basically give up on you. يتبرعون. Why? Because of your rejection. And the third one, الكفر بما أمر الله به أن يوصل. And this is the scary one. الكفر بالنعمة والكفر بما أمر الله به أن يوصل. What is the ما أمر الله به أن يوصل? Allah has commanded certain things to be fulfilled. You deliberately reject. Allah has says, قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى قُرْبَاي أَمْ قُرْبَاكِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Say, I ask no reward of you except for being good, being dutiful to my nearest of kin. The man comes to the Prophet, he says, Ya Rasulullah, my nearest of kin or your nearest of kin? The Prophet says, no, my nearest of kin. However, what do we do here? We say, Kitabullah wa sunnati. Mawlana, the Prophet says, wa itrati. La, la, la. That's not what he meant. Mawlana, the Prophet says, follow my family after me. No, no, no. He meant be kind to them. Mawlana, the Prophet says, Man kuntu mawlah, fahada aliyun mawlah, Allahumma waliman walah, wa adiman adah, wansur man nasarah, wakhdul man khadalah. No, no, he means by wali and ally, be good to him. Even if that is the meaning, they still weren't. 
even if that's the meaning, for argument's sake. We're not saying that that's the case, but we're saying even if that's the case, we kill, you guys killed them afterwards. Not only that, you guys support the ones that kill him. You guys say, Abdul Rahman ibn Muljum was a good man. He was khawarij. It's okay. Mawlana, they killed the family of the Prophet. Radwanullah. Wallah, today I was watching. I was watching a video. I didn't know whether to cry or laugh. Wallah, I didn't know. He calls himself a sheikh and he calls himself a scholar and he calls himself and he says, Harmala. Rudwanullah, astaghfirullah, wallah, I don't want to say it. Harmala was a munafiq. Rudwanullah, Allahumma al'anhu. You're saying Harmala, who killed Imam Hussein, who killed the child of Imam Hussein, and he's a munafiq, and you do taraddi. Allahu Akbar. How hypocritical can you be as a human? Let's return to the bath, insha'Allah. The Quran says, these individuals who deliberately blaspheme, we will have we have nothing to do with them. Then the Quran says, then the Quran starts talking about who? The munafiqeen. And there are those who say we believe in Allah and the hereafter and they are not believers. They attempt to deceive Allah and his messenger and the believers and they do not deceive but themselves. Then Allah says, Fi qulubihim marad. Within their hearts is a sickness. They are sick on the inside. Physically they're not, but the spiritually they are. فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ Here we have to understand one thing in the Arabic language. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And they have a severe torment. بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ This ب, this letter B in Arabic. That is called Ba'us Sababi. What does that mean? That means this B refers to the reasoning behind it. Allah says they will have severe torment. That B, that letter B, is a whole word in English called because. Because of what they used to lie. Because of what they did. Bima kasabat him in another verse. By what they have done with their own hands. By what they have done by themselves. Allah says in the Quran, and those who do not believe, not just do not believe, kathabu. Kathabu means what? Claim that our scriptures are lies. They call us liars. They refuse to believe it. Allah says, the punishment shall befall them. Again, why? Bima kanu yafsiqun. By the transgressions that they committed. Bima, again, that letter, that letter B, because in another verse, Allah says, Lahum. Now, sorry. The Quran says, This is to whom? This is to me and you. Addressing us, leave the outer and the inners of sin. We have two types of sins, outer sins and inner sins. Outer sins being what? The transgressions that you do publicly and that you, to do, that you do to one another. I shouldn't say you, I should say I, honestly. The inner sins are what? Are the transgressions that nobody knows but me and Allah. Then Allah says, إِنَّ al -ithm. Surely those who attain sin, سَيُجْزَوْنَ بِمَا كَانُوا يَقْتَرِفُونَ Now, there is something interesting in this word, يُجْزَوْنَ. Jaza usually means reward in English. However, in the Arabic language, jaza, the word reward could be good or bad. Is that clear? 
Meaning, if you do something bad, you are rewarded negatively. And if you do something good, you are rewarded positively. Here Allah says, they will be rewarded by their sins, according to their sins. It's as if that action equates to the reaction in the hereafter. Because you did this, this is the punishment you get. For this action, this is the punishment that you will receive. Nastajiru billah. Lastly, Allah says, for them, the believers, shall be, shall be the abode of peace in the hereafter, near their Lord, with their Lord. He will be their guardians because of what they used to do. Likewise, with the believers, because of what you do, you shall be rewarded. The Imam al-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Addresses one of his companions. He says, Ya ibn Shabib, O oh, ibn Shabib, O oh, son of Shabib, in asarraka an takuna ma'ana fi darajat, fi darajat al-ula min al-jannat. If you want to be with us in the highest places in the heaven, fahzal li huznina. Be sorrow for our sorrow. And you should be happy for what makes us happy. And be on our wilaya, on our path. For if an individual fell in love with a stone, Allah shall bring them together on judgment day. They shall be together on judgment day. When we look at Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, Amir al-Mu'mineen had multiple kids. Al-Abbas was one of them. They say during the final days of, during the final hours of Amir al-Mu'mineen's life, Amir al-Mu'mineen was surrounded by his family. When his daughter Zainab came to him, she says, Ya Aba, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Laqad haddathatni Ummu Ayman bi hadithi Karbala. Oh, my father, Ummu Ayman told me of what would happen in Karbala. I want to hear the story from you, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. He says, Bunaya Zainab, Faka anni biki. وَنِسَاءَ أَهْلَكِ سَبَايَا بِهَذَا الْبَلَدِ خَاشِعِينَ فَصَبْرًا صَبْرًا He says, Bunaya Zainab, the story is just like Ummu Ayman told you. Zainab, I can almost see you, you and your sisters, imprisoned in this land. Where is this land? In Kufa. Ah, belittled, imprisoned. Be patient, O oh Zainab. She says, Abba, who will protect me after you're gone, Ya Abba? Imam looks at her and he says, Bunaya Zainab, you have your brothers, Hassan and Hussein. She says, Ya Abba, Hassan and Hussein are my Sayyid, they're my masters, and I serve them, but I want someone to be at my service, to be at my beck and call. He says, Bunaya, look at your brothers, choose one from amongst them. They say, as she looked around, she saw a 14 year old lad by the name of Al Abbas, Bi Abi wa Ummi. But Al-Abbas wasn't a normal lad. I can almost see him with his chest puffed out looking at Zainab, saying, me, Zainab, this is, I am the one that you want. She looked and she says, Abba, I want this brother of mine, Al-Abbas. He calls upon him, he brings him, he puts his hand in the hand of Zainab. And he says, Bunay Abbas, this is my trust within you. I trust you over her. Bunay Abbas, don't fall short, whatever she needs. He says, Abba, la uqirrannaka ayna. Oh, my father, I shall make you proud. They say Al-Abbas was at her beck and call every day, in and out, whatever she needed. Zainab, Al-Abbas was there for her. Brothers and sisters, they say one night, this is a poet describing this. He says, one night, Abbas came and sat with Zayd Zainab. And he told her, he says, Ya ukhti, ya Zainab, tell me what happened. She says, what do you mean? He says, what happened to your mother? The poet says, Ga'ad Abbas wa Zainab farid layla. Abbas and Zainab sat together on that night. She wore her mother's hijab and he's looking at it, crying, weeping over what happened to Sayyida Fatima. 
Little did he know that what happens to Zainab is folds over. That's why the poet says, By my father is the one who inherited the tragedies of her mother. She showed the patience of her father when she was defending herself. They say Al-Abbas alayhi salam. When they wanted to leave to Medina, Imam al Hussein came to him and he says, prepare the women. Al-Abbas came to Zayda Zainab. He says, Zainab, let us go. She says, where? He says, we are leaving. Imam Hussein wants to leave. She said, Abbas, who is my protector? This word shocked Al-Abbas alayhi salam. He says, Zainab, you ask such a question when I'm available. They say Al-Abbas brought Bani Hashim, stood them two rows back to back. And he, and he came without a turban and barefooted. And he took Zainab out of her home to her hawdaj, to her mahmal, to her camel, protecting her. They say when he walked, she was walking behind his shoulder blades, between his shoulder blades. And he was looking. Who dares looks up at Zainab? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Until they got to Karbala. When they got to Karbala, the tragedy truly began. They say Al-Abbas was the last man, the last warrior to fall. Brothers and sisters, Al-Abbas was born 62 Hijri. And Karbala was 61 Hijri. Al-Abbas was 20, uh, 34 years old. However, at 34 years old, Al-Imam Al-Sadiq says, Rahimallah amman Al-Abbas. May Allah have mercy over our uncle Al-Abbas. He was a brave, intellectual Smart, individual, a faqih, everything that could be described. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Al-Abbas was the banner bearer for Imam Hussein. So long as Al-Abbas stood, they say Al-Hussein walked upright. Al-Hussein had no fear as long as Al-Abbas was present. Then Al-Abbas heard after he saw everybody die, his brothers died. He was standing by himself. He turned to Imam Hussein and he says, Akhi ya Hussein. Allow me to fight these individuals. The Imam refused. They say as Al-Abbas was walking back, nearly disappointed, he heard Sukaina say, Ya Amma Al-Atash, Al-Atash, the thirst is killing me, uncle. They say Al-Abbas came back. He says, Ya Hussein, Ya, Ab ya Aba Abdullah, Ya Imami. He never called him by his name. He says, if you are not allowing me to fight, then allow me to go and get water for these children. Imam al Hussein says, that I will allow you, go. They say when Al-Abbas alayhi salam came into the battlefield, he says, inni ana al-Abbas aghdu bis-siqa wa la akhafu al-mawt yawm al-multaqa nafsi li nafsi al-nabi al-tuhri wiqa. Indeed, I am Abbas and I am the one who will get the water and I have no fear of death when death comes to meet me. I shall be here to protect, to defend the, fa the Prophet and his family. Brothers and sisters, Al-Abbas alayhi salam did not have a lot of martyrs. He did murders. He did not, sorry, not murders. He did not have a lot of kills. He did not kill a lot of people. Why? Because nobody wanted to face him. In fact, he had a, a rather easy way to the river. Because nobody wanted to face him. Because every time, they say every time they would come surround him, he would, he would run towards them the way that a lion runs towards his prey. And they would run away from him until he was able to get into the water. That's how comfortable he was. That people, were, that they were so afraid of him. They say when he, got, when he got the water, when he came into the water, he wanted to drink a little bit of water. Three days without water. Three days in the, in the heat, in the, in the heat of Karbala without water. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. For those who have been to Iraq, they know how hot it is. They know how dry your mouth gets after but a few moments, a few hours. Three days they were without water. They say when Al-Abbas felt the cold of the water, he cried. He weeped for Hussein. He says, Ya nafsu min ba'dil Hussein huni. O soul, after Hussein, may you be worthless. Wa ba'dahu la kunti anta kuni. هذا حسين وارد المنون وتشربين بارد المعين. He says, this is Hussein at death's door. While you drink cold water, hey hot, hey hot. ما هذا فعال ديني. This is not the reaction of my faith, nor the reaction of one who is true to his way. 
They say Al Abbas filled the Qurba, but he did not want to go through the army because they would not have allowed him to get, they would have showered him with arrows. So he went through the shores where the palm trees are. Brothers and sisters, they say Abil Fadl, when he carried, they surrounded him, but they would see heads flying and limbs falling until the La'een says, Wayhakum, Hada ibn Lanza'il Batin, Hada ibn Qattal al Arab. This is the son of the one who's balding, the one who was well built, the one who was the killer of the Arabs. This is the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. You cannot get to him like this. They said, What do we do? He says, Hide behind the palm trees. Brothers and sisters, the La'udalu'ana hid behind the palm trees. They say when the when Al Abbas came by one of them, he struck him on the right hand. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. But what does he say? He says, Wallahi in qata'tumu yameeni, inni uhami abadan andini. By Allah, if you were to cut off my right hand, I would forever defend my faith. And, on, and I will be protecting, defending an Imam who was truth in who, who was true in certainty. They say then another La'in struck him on his left hand. Al Abbas was the banner bearer. When they struck him on his left hand, they say he hugged the banner. He hugged the banner. Why? He leaned over the banner because if the banner falls, then as does the army. Brothers and sisters, there was only, uh, only Imam Hussein al-Abbas, but he would not let go of the, of the banner. When they struck his right hand, he says, He says, through their mischief, they have cut off my left hand. O oh, self, don't be scared of death. There is nothing to fear, huh? And rejoice by the mercy of your Lord. They say as he was running, they showered him with arrows. When they showered him with arrows, one arrow punctured his eye and another fell into his mouth while another struck him in the neck and one or multiple fell into the judi, into the qirb, into the water bag. They say when this happened, he stopped. Why did he stop? Because he didn't have water to bring back to the women. He had no arms to fight with. He had no arms to fill. He had no, he had no water back to fill up again. As he's standing there pondering, they struck him on the top of his head with a metal pole. They say at that moment, Al Abbas fell from the horse. But when he fell from the horse, he said something he has never said in his life. He says, Alayka minni salam, Akhiya Hussein. Oh, peace be upon you, my brother, or Hussein. They say, when Hussein heard this word, he did not know what to do. He started running towards them. They describe him running towards them the way a sheep chases, uh, the way a wolf chases sheep. La ilaha illallah. They say, when he came to Al Abbas, he stood over Al Abbas's body. However, Al Abbas could not see because one eye had an arrow in it, and another eye, the blood had dried in it from the, uh, from the first eye. They say he couldn't hear from the strike on the top of his head, but he, he felt movement around him. When he felt movement around him, he says, Ya Hadha, by whoever you are, I ask you by whatever God you worship, give me but a few moments until the son of my father comes to me. I, for, my, for my brother to come to me so I can say my goodbyes to him and I can smell him and he smells me and I can kiss him and he kisses me. They say Al Abbas knew this is Imam Hussein because Imam Hussein kissed him on the lips, kissed him on his cheeks, kissed him on the face. Brothers and sisters, at this point, they say Al Hussein carried Al Abbas, put him on his chest and wanted to carry him. However, Al Abbas refused, alayhi salam. Another time, he refused. By the third time, Imam Hussein says, Why don't you want me to carry you? Al Abbas, we said, couldn't hear. However, he responded. He says, Ya Hussein, you will carry me now, but who will carry you in a, but a few moments? Oh, Hussein, you will carry me in this state to take me over to Sukaina and Zaydab. What will befall them if they see me in this state? They say, Imam al Hussein, at these moments, Al Abbas alayhi salam passed away. 
<coughs> However, Imam Al Hussein stood up, but they say when he stood up, he was bent over, he was hunchbacked, he couldn't stand upright. La ilaha illallah. Then he started running after them, saying, Ila ain tafirun wa qad kasartum bahri. Where will you leave? You have broken my back. Where will you leave? You have killed my brother. Where will you go away from me? They say they did not face him. They left him, Imam Hussein B. So the Imam started making his way back. Where? To Zainab wa Akhawad Zainab. Allahu Akbar ya Zainab. They say when he came to the encampment, Zainab saw him. She says, Akhya Hussein, where is your backbone? Hussein, where is your right hand? Hussein, Aina Aduduk, where is where are you? Why are you by yourself? Where is my brother? Where is Al Abbas? They say Imam Hussein did not answer her. Rather, he walked into the tent of Abil Fadl al Abbas and he kicked down the main pole, effectively collapsing the tent, meaning that there is no one coming back to this tent. At this moment, Zainab Sahat, Aywa Akha wa Abbasa. They say when Imam Hussein heard her scream, he also yelled, Aywa Akha wa Abbasa wa Bay'atana Ba'dak. We will are lost without you. We are lost after you, Ya Abbas. They say Zainab, out of shock, wanted to run to the army, wanted to go to Abbas. But Imam al Hussein held her. He says, Zainab, where, what, where do you want to go? She says, I want to go to Abbas. He says, Zainab, return. Don't, don't let the enemy see you. That's why the poet, he says, I am going to Abbas. I want to wake him up. What a good fool for fogs and. And I want to put his arm back over on his body. And tell him this isn't the time for you to sleep. They say at that moment, Imam Hussein looked. He had no one left. Everybody has been killed. He looked at the battle and he said, Oh, how few allies. I have nobody left. Then he started calling them one after one. Ya Habib. Ya Muslim. Ya Abbas, nobody answers him. So he says, why don't you answer me? Are you asleep or have you fallen short in my support? Please, I beg you pay attention to me. Allahumma bil Abbas al wajih ya Allah, bibab al hawaj, bibab al ghira, bibab al fadl ya Allah. Allahumma bil Hussein al wajih, wa jaddihi, wa abi, wa tisat al maasumin min bani. Allahumma ajjal al faraj li maulana sahib al asr wa al zaman. Innahum yaronahu baidan wa narahu qariba. Oh Allah, hasten his reappearance. They might see it far, but we see it near. We expect him in our lifetime, Ya Allah. We want to see him in our lifetime. Allah, when hala baini wa bainahu al Oh Allah, and if death divides between me and my Imam al Hujjah, oh my Lord, then resurrect me to assist him, Ya Allah. I ask Allah to forgive us for all our sins, inshallah, and to bless us through Abil Fadl al Abbas. Brothers, a lot of uh, sisters, a lot of people have asked me for dua. I have a lot of sick individuals, some of my family members included. Please keep my parents and my family and each other's parents and family in your dua. Wa ila arwah al mu'minin wa al mu'minat. Wa arwah man mat ala al huda wa al iman wa shi'at ali ibn Abi Talib kafatan rahim Allah man dhakar al fatiha masbuqatan bil salati ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.